Today's Sunday School lesson is uh, Proverbs 25. Uh, I'm just going to go through verses 1 and 2. It seems like uh, there are so many topics down through Proverbs that if you try to get into all of them, um, it's just so much. And I'm just going to look at verses 1 and 2. There's quite a few thoughts in, in just that, I think. And um, before we get going here, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, again, we come to you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your word that you've given us to study. Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to guide and direct us as we look at this and help us to rightly divide your word and and uh, give glory to your name. We pray for all those that may be unsaved that possibly hear your word today, wherever it's going out. Lord, that uh, your spirit would draw those folks, that your mercy be upon them. Lord, they will accept you as your Savior. And Lord, we ask you to uh, enrich our lives with your word today, as we know it will. And Lord, we praise you as our friend and Savior, our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords. These things we ask in Jesus' name, and on your will be done. And amen. Uh, <clears throat> Look at this uh, Proverbs chapter 5, or I'm sorry, 25, verse 1 and 2. Um, the title of the lesson is Dealing with People. Um, Funny thing at Kroger's the other day, I seen a, a book that said uh, "Dealing with Difficult People." I think was the title to it, and I pointed out to Letitia. I thought maybe she might could use that book, maybe. Um, but in dealing with people, usually the, the the best thing is to deal with yourself to start with. And um, Brother Mickey Wallace used to say that um, getting myself out of the way is is the the hardest thing to do so if I can just get myself out of the way then um, then things you know go a lot better and I think that's true of all of us if we were honest and uh, dealing with myself is the first thing in dealing with other people and having the right attitude and uh, <clears throat> maybe not saying the, the wrong thing um, Sometimes folks say, well, I just said what was on my mind. Well, I, I'll be honest with you. I shouldn't always say what's on my mind. Uh, it may not be politically correct. It may not be scripturally correct. But uh, in, uh, I think, Second Corinthians, it talks about bringing every thought um, to the obedience of Christ. Uh, I didn't quote that exactly, but in Second Corinthians, you can find that. And, uh so that that is the goal and i'll be honest every thought of mine isn't to the obedience of christ so i can't just say what's on my mind we have to as i always say we have to keep the goal in mind we are an ambassador for christ and controlling our tongue is is just part of it uh james speaks about that and so we can't just go around saying everything we think or i can't i, I definitely can't anyway i'll put it that way um but in dealing with people, that is the first thing, is to deal with ourselves first. And remember, uh, the goal is the salvation of those around us, whether they're a friend, whether they're a foe, whether they're an enemy, it doesn't matter. And uh, in this, this proverb, it's one that Paul referred to um, in Romans, and he talked about the, script, the part in this on head down in the chapter where it talks about uh, being kind to your enemies and um, as, you, as you read down through there you'll find that and it talks about uh, you're feeding your enemies um, and, and that's a difficult thing to do we, we, in, in my uh, life I don't always that's not the first thing that comes to my mind usually is being good to someone who's not good to me uh, but we have to learn to deal with that in our life uh, and there's a good reason, because as, as we look at these scriptures we're going to look at here today, it, we answer to God for these things. And uh, just as I answer to God for this lesson, and um, as, as we look through this, we'll see how that, that comes to light. Um, I'm going to read verse uh, 1 out of that 25th chapter. It says, These are also Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah copied out. Um, we, we studied about Hezekiah here a while back, and um, if you remember back at him, he had a really uh, ungodly father, Ahaz, and uh, Ahaz had shut up the house of God. And we look at what's going around on now. Um, some of the, 
I think uh, unjust rulings from governors, uh, whether persecuting Christians that are going to church, um, it, it kind of puts you in the mind of, of the ancient times. His, his guy's dad shut up the house of God. And um, I don't know but what some people are trying to just see how far they can go, um, what they can get by with. Uh, we can readily see how the Antichrist could take over and uh, with, with all what's going on. Um, but Hezekiah had an, uh, a wicked dad. He was an idolater, and uh, he done a lot of wrong, but Hezekiah came on and was king after him, and uh, you know revival started. Hezekiah straightened up a lot of things. And it says in verse 2, or I'm sorry, uh, in First um, Kings 4 and verse 32, uh, speaking of Solomon, and he spake 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. So quite a lot that that man wrote down. And some of those were copied out by Hezekiah's men. And from Hezekiah to um, uh, Solomon, there was about 225 years between the two and you can see over 225 years that there's um, there's still importance placed on those proverbs that God gave Solomon and uh, I, I don't know how accurate these dates are but I added up about 225 years and you know I don't know how they determined all those dates but uh, I'd say that's a pretty accurate figure uh, and a lot of time went by but they were still important to these people and they, it was God's word given to Solomon but now you look at today from Solomon's time till now uh, I added up 2950 years this went by and we're still studying the Proverbs that God gave to Solomon so th those were important um, I'm going to read the, the verse 2 out of that 25th chapter of Proverbs. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Um, it's God's prerogative to conceal something if he wants to. Uh, but a king, even a king, in a high position of a king, it's his honor to search things out the, you know to search out the things of God God is an honor um, God has concealed some things that he you know he's not chosen to reveal everything and we, we wouldn't understand it if he did but in Hebrews in the first uh, chapter of Hebrews it talks about how the, in times past God spoke by his prophets but he has revealed himself to us through Jesus Christ now um, but it's God's business if he wants to conceal something. And in Deuteronomy 29, 29, it says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Now in Romans chapter 11, verse 33, Paul wrote, O the depth of of the riches both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out who hath known the mind of the Lord or who hath been his counselor uh, God is past searching out we can't figure God out uh, you know God can do things that are so complex that we just can't figure them, them out um, and as I said, if God were to explain these things to us, I just don't think that we fully understand. Um, yeah, the, the fact that God can conceal things proves that He is indeed God. Um, you know, we we don't even understand how we work. We, we haven't figured out the human body yet, uh, let alone the creation of the human body. Um, God said in Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Um, there's no detailed instructions about how he did that. You know, he didn't 
uh, try to break down how he took atoms and put them together and all the neutrons, protons, and electrons that they talk about. They say they're there. I, I've never seen them, but that's, that's what they say. Um, but no matter how deep we can look uh, with electron microscopes and what have you that they've came up with, no matter how deep they look, they cannot figure out everything. It just gets more and more detailed, more and more complex. So God is, the smaller you go, the, he's infinite. And farther out into space we go, there's more than, they've discovered more and more as they have went deeper and able to look deeper. Uh, so he's infinite. And you, we just can't figure him out. And there's no way that we can understand God. Uh, he hasn't revealed all these things to us. And uh, like I say, we would not understand them anyway. Uh, you know, in the, the creation account, uh, God said different times without detail, and God said, or God made. He didn't go into instructions on how he did it. Or no, no discourse on how he put things together. It's just still a mystery to us. Um, you know, God said let there be light and there were light and you know that that happened on the very first day there was light but the sun wasn't created to the fourth day as you read that account so God did not need the sun for light but in Revelations uh, 21 and 22 uh, in New Jerusalem he said there's no need of the moon or the sun for light because the lamb and God are the light of it they, they will lighten it. And uh, we don't need the sun or the moon in New Jerusalem uh, for light. God didn't need the sun to create light on the very first day. He, he had light. <laughs> so we're dealing with someone here that's far bigger than, than our minds can, can get around. Um, <clears throat> you know the, the theory of evolution that's pretty popular nowadays, the Big Bang Theory. Uh, Charles Darwin's book, which has caused a lot of problems, the, the um, origin of the species. None of those things explain creation. Uh, people try to marry those things to the Bible, and they just don't fit. They're a piece of the puzzle that that's in the wrong box. It, it doesn't fit God's box. Um, you, you can't take those things and, and put them together. Um, they don't explain creation, and they don't explain it away either. We have to keep that in mind. They definitely do not do not discount God's creation account in Genesis. You know, we have the evidence of God. Uh, we know that He's there, but we um, we still have to take Him by faith. You know, you if you see. Um, uh, a picture on the wall, you know, there's a, a painter, and we see creation, and we see all that God has done, and it's too complex for there not to be uh, someone behind it, and we know that it is indeed the God of the Bible that we worship, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, we have to take God at His Word, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and Jesus Christ is that man. Um, now, we get into the beauty of this. You know, God is able to conceal some things, but He has revealed enough of himself, and I believe, I believe Aaron mentioned this the other day, if I'm not mistaken, that he's revealed enough to us that we know he's God. He's concealed enough that we still have to take it by faith. We do have to believe in him by faith. Um, now, God can, God can conceal some things about himself. Like I said, he didn't give us all the details of creation, but can we hide something from God? Uh, this is the beauty of this, I think. God is able to do that, and it's his prerogative. He's the creator. It, this all belongs to him, so can we hide something from God? Well, I'm going to read um, the 139th, part of the 139th Psalm, verses 1 through 18. A little bit of reading here, but this is um, a favorite psalm of a lot of people. It's a beautiful psalm. Uh, it tells us a lot of information. There's a lot to digest in this. Uh, my Bible describes this to David. The Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sittings and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue 
but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. That's interesting, isn't it? Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shalt thou hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the night are both alike to thee. I think I said I was going to read. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I got mixed up. Uh, I'm going to read on to verse 18. Sorry about that. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that thou knowest right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which is in continuous were fashioned incontinuous were fashioned when as yet there was none of them how precious also are thy thoughts unto me O god how great is the sum of them uh, there's a lot of interesting things in that psalm there's just a lot to digest there but as you can see david realized he couldn't get away from god now if you're into mischief that might be a fearful thing but to the christian that's a comforting thing knowing that you can't get away from god uh, now, as we continue on here to thinking about David, uh, you know, of course, he's famous for a lot of things, but one of the things is, a, is not a good thing. He's famous for the, his adul adultery with Bathsheba. But I ask you a question now. Do you think that he would have committed adultery with Bathsheba had he known that we would be studying about that, reading that in God's Word some 3,000 years later? You know, all that time has passed by, and we're, we're still studying about that sin that David committed. Uh, in Second Samuel twelve twelve, God told David, For thou did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the Son. And, and God has. It's, that has been recorded in God's Word. And so, you know, as we live out our lives, we realize that, God is God, and He can conceal some things about Himself, but we we cannot. Um, you know, in the great white throne of judgment, uh, the unsaved will be judged out of the books in Revelation 20, verses 11 and 12. And David has said, that he mentioned that God had him written in a book, his members written in a book, uh, in that 139th Psalm. But, you know, the unsaved will stand before the judgment, uh, the great white throne of judgment, which Christians will not be there. And there's going to be books opened. And uh, one of those books is the Book of Life, of course. And they're going to be judged out of those books. But what about the good guys? What about the Christians? Uh, I say good guys uh, in a humorous way here because we know we're just saved by the grace of God. And... Uh, we're trying to represent him, but uh, I have to laugh when I call myself one of the good guys. Um, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 3, uh, verses 11 through 15, it, it talks about the judgment of the Christians. So we will also stand in a judgment for our stewardship. How have, how have we done with what God has given us? Um, it says... The, the works will be made manifest and tried by fire. Um, 
you know when Michael was was little and uh, Aaron and Dusty and Tegan him was all living in town there on Fifth Street. Uh, there was a little place in the in the house we when we play hide and seek I would hide in and Michael never did find me and later on I I told him when he got a little older but uh, he would always walk by there and I think well he's, maybe he's going to get me but he he would always walk by and he'd never look there for some reason and I was able to hide I was able to to uh, evade him finding me but you know you think about that that was a fun little game now you play that Marley Jane now she she tends to get excited and tickled and she'll start laughing and give you away or or if you're looking for her and you ask her if she's in there and you know she is but and then she'll answer you back she the hide and seek games she, she had not quite caught on to it fully yet but it's it's fun anyway but in a more serious note uh you know you you count in that little game and ready or not here i come but you know one day that's going to be the way it is with god ready or not he's he's going to be coming he's going to come back and rapture the church out and then the tribulation period is going to be on the scene and the antichrist and a time when you don't want to be there you want to be with the people that's that's leaving out uh you, you can't hide from god uh letitia some of her uh verses she's remembered she's memorized quite a few and uh i asked her about this today to tell me where it was at and uh she gave me these two verses ecclesiastes ecclesiastes 12 verse 13 let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So everything's going to come into judgment. That's a sobering thought, isn't it? Now, Christ said in Matthew 12, um, 36 and 37, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by the words thou shalt be justified, or, I'm sorry, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Now I don't have to take that out of context, but he's, he's talking about, if you read verse 31 through 37, you see he's talking about the things that are in the heart and how the mouth speaks to things that are in the heart. Um, you know, I can uh, hide things from you, uh, but you know I can't. I can't hide them from God, and God has revealed enough of Himself, though, that that I know my only hope is to accept Jesus Christ. Uh, he's revealed that to me. He's revealed enough about Himself that everything we need to know, He's revealed. Now, you know, in eternity, uh, I still don't think we'll ever comprehend God. I really don't think that's ever going to happen throughout the, all eternity. But he's revealed all we need to know about him. And, you know, I know that I need a Savior. I know I need Jesus Christ. I know that I can't hide my sins, and I can't measure up. Uh, so my only hope is forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Uh, Colossians 3, verses 3 and 4 says, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye appear with him in glory. That's our only hope is through Jesus Christ. We can't hide our sin. We can't live up to God's standard. So our only hope is forgiveness through our belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I, I would recommend that to everyone today. If you haven't um, accepted Christ, realize that one day... Uh, ready or not he's coming back and you need to be ready and if you do accept him just just let someone at the church know get word back to us somehow or another uh, you can call any of us uh, I always say my number's in a book but I don't even know if they have phone books now or not I, I've seen some old phone books here at home and I uh, they didn't look like the, the ones we used to get so I don't know what's available out there everything's so electronic now but um, next week's lesson will be uh, Proverbs 31 for Mother's Day, and I, I failed to announce that. I, I kind of forgot that you know we're not at the church, and maybe some folks may not have a lesson book uh, with them. But I hope everyone has a good day, and Lord willing, we'll maybe see you the next time I post something, or um, you know, as the 
friend of mine used to say, if we don't meet again down here, we know where we'll meet. Take care.